A rainy September day in Madison was one for the record books. And we had over three inches of rain. It was localized, but at least in Dane County, over three inches of rain. It was the, the wettest September day on record. Dr. Vavris studies how major weather events relate to climate change. He believes that storm supports a recent global warming study conducted by the University of Wisconsin. Well, it's very consistent. Uh, the, the belief that we're going to have more intense rainfalls is fully consistent with not only the, the climate model projections, but also the observational data over the last oh, few decades. In Madison in particular, we've had a, a big increase in the number of 2-inch and 3-inch rainfall events this decade and even in the, to the 90s. That study was published in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel earlier this month. State Representative Jim Ott, who is also a meteorologist, says the study is flawed. In the same newspaper, same day, you have an article on the front page that, that talks about this study that by 2055 our climates could be like Missouri. And meanwhile, you know, you know, that's the prediction for 45 years out. Meanwhile, same newspaper, it says that the weather was so cool this summer that the farmers are, are afraid their crops aren't going to mature. So you have prediction versus reality. One problem with debating global warming is trying to figure out the difference between weather patterns and actual climate change. It does get tricky. For instance, our Tuesday flood here in Madison, that's a weather event. But on the other hand, it, when you compare the, it and the fact that we've had nine such, uh, have eight or nine such heavy three-inch rainfall events in Madison this decade, which is unheard of in the 100-plus year record, then that becomes of climatic significance, especially because it's exactly the sort of increase we're expecting based on the model projections. To the flip side of that, I think that that's a lot of what the human-induced global warming proponents are doing. They're taking a relatively short period of data and they're saying, you know what, this is climate change. Well, you know, now we've had a couple of years around here that have been kind of cool again. The summers have been cool and the winters are pretty brutally cold and snowy, the last two of them. So does that mean we're heading to an ice age again? If you're going to use that kind of a, a data, length of data to go and project, it just doesn't work out. You know, one of the problems with the climate change is that you have to wait long enough so that the, the signal from the greenhouse increase in greenhouse gases becomes strong enough that it can overwhelm just the natural year-to-year, day-to-day fluctuations in weather. So that's always a, a confounding factor, that there's always natural variability, aside from greenhouse warming, uh, that's superimposed on this greenhouse warming signal. And so we think that over time in 20, 30, 40, 50 years that we'll really see an obvious warming signal in a very different, substantially different climate than what we're used to. At the heart of the global warming debate is carbon dioxide or CO2. It's a greenhouse gas produced both by nature and by human industry. CO2 is an important greenhouse gas. It's along with methane and, um, and ozone, nitrous oxide. Those are all uh, CFCs. Those are all uh, greenhouse gases that absorb heat that's emitted from the surface of the earth and then absorbed and then partially re-emitted back to the surface. So it acts like a blanket. And uh, it's, CO2 is, of course, a natural substance, but uh, humans are artificially increasing the, the magnitude, the concentration of it in the atmosphere, and there's no doubt about that. And that trend is, is going to increase or continue for the foreseeable future. And so there's every belief, every reason to believe that uh, as greenhouse gas concentrations go up, that the climate will warm. The, the difference of opinion among climatologists is, is how much and, and how quickly and what are the impacts of that change. And some feel that the, the increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh, are responsible for temperature fluctuations, generally temperatures going up. There's other researchers who say that amount of change in carbon dioxide is insignificant. It wouldn't have any impact at all. And there also are researchers who say, you know, you look back over the climate record and the carbon dioxide record, and what you see is that carbon dioxide tends to follow temperatures. When temperatures have warmed, carbon dioxide levels then go up. Not only are there disagreements about the impact CO2 has on climate change, it's also not clear how CO2 specifically produced by humans fits into the picture. It's been estimated that of all the carbon dioxide that's been produced by human activities, the burning of fossil fuels, 80% of that has been released since 1940. Well, what I would expect then, if, if that's such a big factor, I would expect that since 1940, temperatures should have been going steadily up. They're not. 
They went down starting in 1940. As I mentioned, they bottomed out in the, basically the 1960s and stayed pretty cool in the 1970s to the extent that there was that famous article in Newsweek that talked about the Ice Age because it had been cold. Well, then temperatures started going up again in the late 70s. They topped out in the late 90s, and since then they've been steady and then taken a downturn. That does not match the carbon dioxide curve. Yeah, and that's where there's a confusion between weather and climate because the, the climate signal, the, the effect of, of increasing greenhouse gases is long term. It's sort of a, a superimposed background uh, pushing the trend, the temperatures gradually upward, but superimposed on that will always be natural variability. In fact, climate models predict that we'll still get Arctic air outbreaks by the middle, even late part of the century, superimposed on a warmer, generally warmer winter climate. So those, those fluctuations from day to day and year to year, uh, even a cool year, a cool summer like we had in July, uh, don't negate the, the whole idea of greenhouse warming. It's, it's a lot like the stock market. Even in a bull market, you're going to have some bad days, or bad weeks even, but that doesn't negate the fact that the general trend is upward. There are more than two sides to the global warming debate. Even those who believe it is occurring don't necessarily agree on many of the details or possible solutions. There's overwhelming consensus among scientists that the basic concept of greenhouse warming is valid. If we put more heat absorbing gases like CO2 into the atmosphere, there's every reason to believe that the climate will warm. The differences of opinion come into the, the details, the magnitude of the warming. Some people think that the warming impact from that won't be that big. Uh, some people think it will be big, but we should put our chips into other problems, such as you know, more human-related problems, such as disease prevention. While the scientific community is still looking for consensus, the U.S. government is already pushing a solution. Cap-and-trade legislation would regulate carbon emissions possibly slowing global warming at the expense of the U.S. economy. The Obama administration wants it passed before a major climate summit in Copenhagen this December. For the MacGyver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.